so glad to be here. I'm so glad to be here. So glad to be in this place, which uh, Jonas told me that if I say with an English accent, which I find rather easy, it's a very solution-focused word, you're an asset. And you are an asset. And I think this is oh, fundamental of why we're here and what we believe. But Talking about solution focus is not the same as doing solution focus. And I'm going to talk about it. I do know how to do it when I remember, but today I'm going to talk about it, so forgive me for that. SF practitioners are very interested in difference. That's why we ask questions like, what's better? What are the signs that something's better? We're looking for difference. And what I want to do today is look at what I think is a very important question. What is different about SF? I think I'm on slightly dangerous territory here because it's a question that many people, including people in this room, shy away from. But I think if the strap line of this conference is the future perfect of SF, then it would perhaps be helpful if we had some common understanding, agreement, perhaps, of what that might be. Now, I said, this is dangerous territory. <laughs> Oh, more than half a century ago, I'll let you guess how much more than half a century ago, I was 15 and uh, I was going out one evening and my grandmother said to me, the way they do, you're not going out looking like that, are you? <laughs> and I said, just because you're old is no excuse for being rude. <laughs> and she said, Yes, it is. <laughs> so, I have my grandmother's permission to be rude, and I fear I just might be. Um, it's a slippery topic. I know why we hesitate to define it. Because whatever you say, there'll be an exception to. So I, I understand this, honestly, but I am interested in where can we put our flag on? What can we say? And I think part of the future perfect of SF is coming to some understanding about what that is. Now, I don't think this matters in your own work. Whatever you do, you can formulate your own future perfect. But if you're going to go under the SF flag, I think it's important that you somehow, that we somehow, maintain its reputation and don't queer the pitch for other people who are flying under the same banner. And I want to pay enormous tribute here to Bjorn Johansson for many things. But Bjorn and Eva also were asking this question for a long time. How do we improve our practice? How do we research in what we do if we can't talk about what we do? And so they started with a cast out group. Many of you belong to the cast out group many years ago now. We had a meeting in Vienna where we carried on talking about what we rather grandly called SF in the landscape of ideas. And um, who are our neighbours? Sabine Indiger and I had a, had a title for this. We called it Meta Thing. What is this Meta Thing that SF is a part of? And uh, these learned people came up with rather more grandiose descriptions of what Meta Thing might be. You can read it for yourself, but it's a post-cognitive discursive practice. 
Gail Miller and Mark McCurg authored Narrative Emergence. So I think this is the, the meta thing that we're part of, the banner that we fly under. So I'm going to get to the point soon. <laughs> okay. My own conclusion from all of this is, this is sufficiently different to call it a paradigm shift. And I have a picture of here of one of my many heroes, Copernicus. I'm basing what I'm saying on an article that I did for the EBTA, the European Brief Therapy Association conference a couple of years ago in Turin, Turin Poland, which is where Copernicus came from. Copernicus discovered, um, observed, that this planet is not the center of the solar system. This planet is not the center of the universe. Uh, and it took, I can't remember, 50 or 100 years before people generally agreed with him. We may be in for a long call, but I think there's a paradigm shift here. Okay, here we go. Look at the right-hand column. This is where I may start to get controversial. I think when you see people doing things in the right-hand column, there may be some suspicion that it might not be solution-focused. Theories of change, precursors, stages, blockages, impediments, all of these things are not part of our normal vocabulary. And I have to use our normal vocabulary because there may be exceptions. I just want to do a little diversion here. I don't know where Patrick is from High Five. He's doing performance management later. I went to, um, I went to a workshop about performance management delivered by one of our competitors, you might say. And what I'm going to show you is the icebreaker. This is the thing that set us in the right mood to get to the task of working out how we can improve performance. I can't make my mouth say these words. You have to read them for yourself. <laughs> This is supposed to get us into the mood to talk about improving performance. Ah! <laughs> Icebreaker, this is the first thing that a group of strangers are going to talk about. Anyway, back to the left hand column, let's come back home. We do have a theory. We do have a theory. And our theory is what do we pay attention to? Out of the millions of words that people say to us, okay, dozens of words that people say to us, what do we choose to pick up on? We choose to pick up on what they want, on signs that things are going well and what other people will notice. We're interested in detail. And uh, Sibicheva's famous favourite philosopher here, we must do away with all explanation. Description must take its place. And anybody who has seen the work of Chris Iveson and Guy Shannon will know what exquisite detail we can go into and how valuable that can be. Thank you for showing me your work. Um, Look at, you know, it's not as if to say I did this because of my parents, the way I was brought, even when it was. <laughs> 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 Sorry, my um, Or because I was angry, or because of the bad marketing plan, or because... Huh? It doesn't tell you what to do. Ben has this wonderful thing about the explanation cycle. It actually makes you more stuck. I'm like this because of the way I was brought up. There's no escape route from that. <laughs> Adopt me. <laughs> <laughs> when we're talking about people, and I'm not talking about motor cars, mechanistic causality is not helpful. This happened because of this. Therefore, root cause analysis is not a helpful discipline when we're talking about people. 
In our world, change is happening all the time. Imagine us. It's not SF to recognize, to diagnose, to generalize. It's real life to do all those things. That's why I don't think SF is a way of life. Of course you have to do all those things. How would you know how to get us out of the room if you didn't know what a door looked like? So of course we do all those things, but it's not SF to do those things. It's SF to think that every case is different and to have a beginner's mind. I nearly stopped, I nearly didn't put anything on the left-hand side on this slide, because I thought, okay, I'll run out of theory now for SF. But in SF it is, of course, about context, about interactions, about what happens in this case with these people in this circumstance. And uh, to those of you who haven't yet read it, I commend to you Harry Corman and Mark McCurger's article, which talks about drivers, drivers of behaviour, either internal thoughts, beliefs, values, or external power structures. We believe that what happens is contextual and interactional, and that every case is different. We have a different orientation. And here is another of our major problems, our name, solution focus. In English and in most other languages that I have inquired about, to an ordinary person in the street, solution means, what shall I do? In our very technical meaning of the, world, of the word, it means, what do I want? What's the general, it's the miracle. But here's another little cautionary tale. The miracle is not a goal. The miracle sets a direction. And of course it's conditional. Your destiny, the, the, the direction can change, circumstances change, what you want can change. So we're not really a goal-driven uh, discipline. All of these other things just get you more stuck than you were before. I'll just say this. We are orientated to small, small details. What's better? And what's the next small step in that general direction? And is that general direction still a valuable general direction? Recalibrate, check all the time. Now, of course, in the real world, you need all those things, but don't get confused by them. Yeah? They have a purpose, but the purpose is not to tell you what to do next. <laughs> oh dear, now in the article that I wrote, I, I, talked a lot, I talked quite a lot about depth, saying that the idea of depth is very deep in our culture, and it shouldn't be. <laughs> it really shouldn't be. Uh, this is another quote from Wittgenstein. Since all is open to view, there is nothing to explain and nothing to dig into. People will tell you, show you what is important. Ah, difference is interesting. I started by saying this and I end by saying this. We're always interested in differences. What's better? What's, what are the exceptions or the counters? What are the signs of progress? What an amazing tool, the scaling tool is, for discerning little differences that are full of information. And look at these. It's not SF to talk in labels, even if the label is an exciting one like bipolar disorder. It's not a useful um, word, attribution. These are more interesting to think about. <sighs> Expertise. We have this amazing, we are such nice people. And uh, it annoys me sometimes that we, we're not assertive enough. We don't, we, when people say things like, um, of course, um, I find it, I do what works and doing what works is solution focused, therefore I am solution focused. We ought to have the courage to say, no. It's not as simple as asking a scaling question. There's more to it than that. We should be more assertive. Um, and we should say we are experts. Oh, I don't know anything. Yes, we do. We know how to have useful conversations. 
And we should be assertive about that and proud about that and do it more often. And not when I, I, I'm going to slightly exaggerate, but when I hear somebody say, I'm eclectic, I use SF with my past life therapy regressions, I think, I don't think you do. <laughs> and I should probably say, no, you don't. We need to be ruder, more assertive. <laughs> my grandmother said. <laughs> And so here he is again. When I considered those things carefully, the contempt, which you get sometimes when you say, what do you mean? What are the hidden, the hidden causes? What are the real causes? What are, I think the contempt which we have to fear because of the novelty and apparent absurdity. What do you mean you don't ask about problems? The apparent absurdity of my view. Nearly induced me to abandon my work, said Copernicus. My hope for the future of SF is that we become more assertive about our work and we don't abandon it. There we are, that's us. The article is on the website. Enjoy it. Thank you.